Norvig's book on artificial intelligence, but here it goes. Say I'm at work. My neighbor John calls to say my alarm is ringing, but my neighbor Mary doesn't call. Sometimes my alarm is set off by minor earthquakes. Now, it's also set off, you know, if there's a burglary, that's, I would expect my alarm to, to be set off by a, by a thief in the house. My question is, I know that John calls and Mary called. Is there a burglar? That's, that's my, that's my uh, question. I see the messages and I see that, you know, they called me. Well, the variables of this problem are the burglar, whether there was a burglary or not, an earthquake, whether there was an earthquake or not that might have set up my alarm, uh, whether my alarm is ringing, and uh, the fact that John calls or might not call and Mary calls that might be true or false again. Okay? Now, then, I not only need the variables, but also to figure out my, my little world of, of alarms and setting off and, and calls, I want to say that, you know, a burglar can set the alarm off, an earthquake can set the alarm off, the alarm can cause Mary to call me, and the alarm can also cause John to call me. It doesn't necessarily do these things, but it can cause these things, okay? And this is an important relationship that we will uh, see when we design Bayesian networks, is that we're sort of reflecting what I think might be the causes of some phenomenon. A Bayesian network is basically a model of what I think the world is. And I think the world of John calling me and Mary calling me when my alarm goes off is exactly the, the way I've just described it. Now, I can put this in a graphic form. In a graphic form with, you know, the burglary can set off the alarm, an earthquake can also set off the alarm, the alarm can make John call me and the alarm can make Mary call me, right? Now, what is the probability that, say, for example, now the, we have four, uh, five variables here, right? Remember uh, our discussion about conditional probability tables, okay? In a conditional probability, in a joint probability table, I can check whether if John, the probability that John calls and Mary calls and the alarm is set off and the burglary is true, and an earthquake is true, I can see that in a joint probability table where I have all the variables with all possible combinations. Okay? Now, to build a table with all possible combinations, there's two possible values for burglary, two for earthquake, two for alarm, two for John calls, two for Mary calls. Okay? So let's take a look at what that would be. Let's say one means true and zero means false. So the burglary is true, the earthquake is true, alarm is true, John calls is true, Mary calls is true, that would have some probability value. Now the same thing, but without Mary calling would have another probability value. Now the same thing, but with John not calling and Mary calling might have a different probability value. The same thing, but with none of them calling might have a different probability value, and so on and so forth. I have to try all possible combinations. Because there's two values on each of these variables, this is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, right? Uh, uh, which is 2 to the 5th, right? Which is 32. Now, usually if they're in the Bayesian network's binary nodes, okay, the size of this joint probability distribution table will be 2 to the n minus 1. So it's not 32, okay, it's 31. Why is that? Well, because all, we know that all these probabilities have to sum up to 1. So what we can do is we can leave the last one out because we know it's going to be 1 minus the rest. right? That's why it's 2 to the n, and then we can also leave the last row out, and that's 31. Now, uh, the other thing that we can do, though, is slightly different. We can we can condition all the different nodes of the network and get their conditional probability tables, okay? And this is what a conditional probability table is. So the probability of burglary, so we sum, in this case, uh, uh, I'm sorry, so we marginalize and condition. So for the probability of burglary, we marginalize all the other columns. We marginalize E, A, J, and M, okay? And we can obtain that the probability is 0.01. The probability of earthquake is 0.02. Now, the alarm 
I've already established that it depends on burglary and earthquake. So I conditioned the alarm on burglary and earthquake and, can, and, and then I marginalized joint calls and merry calls. So then it's a probability distribution to, uh, joint probability table with only three columns, right? Or one for uh, one for the alarm being uh, one for the alarm, one for burglary, one for earthquake. So if there's burglary, there's earthquake. The probability that my alarm rings is 0.95. It's I, I I determined that again by conditioning and marginalizing properties. Now, the other thing is that there should be another column here for the probability that my alarm does not ring, given those other two things. But then, because that because this horizontally should be a probability, then the probability that the alarm doesn't ring condition in burglary and earthquake should be 1 minus 0 0.95, okay? So that would be 0 0.05. In the same way, the probability that there's a burglary, but not an earthquake, is 0 0.94. Therefore, did my alarm rings when there's not when there's a burglary, but not uh, an earthquake, is 0 0.94. The probability that my, my alarm does not ring, given those conditions, is 0 0.06. It's 1 minus 0 0.94, and so on and so forth. So if I marginalize and uh, condition my my conditional probability distribution, my um, joint probability distribution based on my graph. So Mary calls would be conditioned on alarm, for example, okay, only on alarm. Then I would get this conditional probability tables. Now, I'll talk more about Bayesian network in a second, but Bayesian network, it has a very nice property, and it's that a node um, is, con uh, is conditionally dependent only on its parents, given its parents is conditionally dependent. Uh, a node is only conditionally dependent on its parents, okay, for for the time being. So the conditional probability tables are only conditioned on the parents of the different nodes. So the parents of alarm of these two are burglary and earthquake, therefore that's my conditional probability table. John calls this condition alarm, so therefore alarm is my only conditioning thing here, okay? And that is because alarm already carries with it the probabilities of burglary and earthquake in here, okay? Now, as we've seen, a conditional probability table for a Boolean uh, with k Boolean parents has approximately 2 to the k rows for the combinations of parent values, okay? So, not approximately, but exactly 2 to the k. Now, each row requires one number p for each probability, okay? That's the, uh, the fact that it's true, because they're binary, then the, the, if xi is false, then it'll be 1 minus the probability of xi being true. Now, each variable has no more than k parents, okay? So if each variable in this, this is the network, burglary, alarm, earthquake, Mary, and John, if each network here has no more than k parents, okay, say two parents, the complete network will require at most n, the number of nodes, times two to the k parents. This is a lot less because it grows, it's a lot less than two to the n, okay? because this grows linearly with the number of nodes, whereas the joint probability distribution is 2 to the n, that means it grows exponentially with the number of nodes. Okay. Now for the burglary net, we have the number of nodes, time, uh, the, we have the, the number of variables, right? So we have 1, 1, 4, 2, and 2. 1, 1, 4 values, 2 values, and 2 values. So to fully describe the the network we only need 10 values versus 31 if we had the joint probability distribution now if we had one more node say with one parent we would have 11 values but we would have 2 to the 6 so 64 minus 1 we would have 63 entries in the joint probability distribution this will grow a lot this doesn't grow by much all right so <clears throat> Like I said, the network represents a set of conditional, independ uh, conditional independence assertions. Each node is asserted to be conditionally independent of its non-descendants given its immediate predecessors. So, for example, um, Campfire is conditionally independent of its non-descendants, it's conditionally independent of Lightning and Thunder, given Storm and Bus Tour Group. 
So given the parents of campfire, campfire is conditionally independent of these two things. This will become uh, relevant later on. And you can see this, campfire, only we can only consider con storm and bus tour group for the values of campfire, not campfire. Okay? That's another way of writing the, the conditional probability table. Okay? Now, a Bayesian network is also a directed acyclical graph. It's directed because it has arrows, so there's a dependency uh, from bus, bus tour to campfire. This doesn't go both ways, it's directed. And it's a cyclical, meaning that no arrow will point back to a place where we can have a little cycle there. Another very important thing is that because of this assertion that uh, be, because of the of because of it being a, a cyclical direct graph, uh, direct graph, we can uh, we can also say that the joint probability distribution is equal to the production or the product of the probability of each individual variable with each individual individual value, given the parents of that val of that variable given that value. Okay, so the joint distribution is fully defined by the graph, plus knowing the probabilities of um, the node given the parents. And the probability of the node given the parents is what goes in the conditional probability tables. So if you have a conditional probability table and a network and with each, each node has its own conditional probability table, then you can get any entry in the joint probability distribution by just replacing the values of the nodes that you want and then just executing this formula. Okay, so for example, <clears throat> I'm at work, neighbor John calls to say my alarm is ringing, but my neighbor Mary doesn't call. Sometimes it is set off by minor, minor earthquakes. Is there a burglar? So what I want is to know whether, I want to see which one's, which one's bigger. This joint probability of John calling, Mary calling, the alarm being set off, and without an earthquake, I want to see whether if burglary is true, whether that is bigger than burglary being false. And what I would have to do is compute the joint probability, uh, the, uh, get the entry of the joint probability table where John calls, Mary calls, the alarm is ringing, burglary is true, and the earthquake is false. Because this is the probability of each one of these things given, uh, given the probability of its parents, given its parents, well, John only depends on alarm. Let's, let's take a little refresher of that graph. John depends on alarm, Mary depends on alarm. Alarm depends on two things, and burglary and earthquake don't depend on anything. So, let's go with John equals true. That's the probability of John equals true given the alarm equals true, because it's the probability of one node with its value given the probability, given the parent, and the parent we already established the alarm is ringing. Let's go with Mary now. Well, probably if Mary equals true, so Mary calls, given that the alarm is true. Again, node given parent. Now we know the alarm here, the alarm is true, okay? So we go probably of the alarm being true, given the parents, burglary true and earthquake false. Okay, now we're, remember, we're, pro we're probing with, uh, with the burglary being true. And again, this is the probability of the alarm giving us two parents. Continue. So we did alarm. Now we're going to do burglary equals true. The probability of burglary. Whoops. The probability of burglary equals true. Here, because it has no parents, it's just that probability. And the probability of earthquake equals false, which is coming from here. So this is the probability of the whole network, if knowing that John called me, Mary called me, and the alarm was set off. Okay. And uh, there's no. I'll just assume that there's no. Earth, there's no earthquake. Okay. Now I'm looking to see whether there was a burglary or not. Right. So I don't know. I will test first with burglary true, which is this this equation up here. Okay. This equation up here. Now I can also test with burglary being false. <clears throat> and burglary here is false. I had a typo here. This should have been burglary being false over here. But basically, wherever there's burglary equals, I will put false. And I will compare which one is, is, uh, is bigger. And it turns out that the fact that they call me doesn't really mean that there's a burglary because this is lower. 
okay? So I will compute this. This is how I get the, the entries of the joint probability table. Remember, this is just an entry in the joint probability table with burglary true, and I want to see whether with burglary false I will get which one will be higher, and that's the one that the probability that, of what's probably happening. Now, um, quick thing about semantics. Like we said, each node is independent of its non-descendants given its parents. So if I give the parents, this node is independent of the Z's here because they're, they're not directly influencing him. And then there's another concept called the Markov blanket, okay? Where each node is conditionally independent of all the other nodes if I give it its Markov blanket, which is the parents of this node and the parents of the children of this node, the co-parents, okay? or the children's parents. So knowing this, this is all I need to know to know a node. So if the network is super big and I want to compute the probability of this being something, uh, I only need to know this, these probabilities. Okay. As an example of what a Bayesian network that might be bigger than what we've seen and will see look like is this. So, for example, the car won't start. That's the initial evidence, right? And this is what I think are the possible uh, things that can make a car not start. There are some hidden variables that I don't know whether they're present or not here, right? And then there are other, other variables that can be symptoms, right? Testable uh, variables. Testable variables are the green ones. I can, I can check these. And then there's orange variables that are causes of some of these uh, either hidden nodes or, or, um, or testable variables. This is a nomenclature that I picked. Usually what happens is that the evidence nodes, the things that you actually know for sure, are going to be shaded somehow in, 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 a, in, a, in a way that's special, that's not the same as the network. All right, let's talk about inference. So the problem now comes with this. If, if I have the value of some, if I know the value of some nodes and I have the conditional probability table, well, how do I determine what's probable and what's not? Well, to determine, for example, the probability of burglary, given that John called, okay? So I only know that John called and I want to know if there was a burglary or not. What I have to do here, well, by uh, Bayesian theorem, this is this can be converted to this. Check the the lectures on the on Bayesian uh, statistics, but this is just a transformation. Now, if we take P B divided by P J as alpha, normalization constant, okay, we realize that this becomes the probability of John calling, uh, given uh, given burglary times the probability of burglary, which is basically John calls and burglary happening, okay? Now, uh, an alpha is one divided by the probability of John calling, okay? So, the way to compute this is that if we are having the probability of, say, uh, burglary, given the John call and Mary now call, so this is two variables here, it is pretty easy, I mean, if you if you just do the same formula here, it's pretty easy to just go to, this is an alpha, some normalization constant, times the probability of, the joint probability of, of uh, burglary, John, and Mary. This is a joint probability with less variables than what we had before, right? So that, therefore, what I need to do here is marginalize alarm in this alarm and earthquake. To marginalize, I sum over all the values of earthquake and all the values of alarm, and the, over the joint probability table of all the variables, right? So the alpha, the normalization constant, times the, prob the joint probability of burglary John and Mary, burglary John calls, Mary calls, is basically the marginalization of the full joint probability distribution with the values that I know and the ones that I don't. Um, now, what about the probability that John calls given the burglary is true? Well, that is just a conditional probability. Again, we will use this, this sort of, um, of conversion. For this probability that John called, and now there's, there's smart ways of doing this, of, of 
getting these probabilities here. So for example, let me just write this up here. Whoops, let me just write this here. I'm going to try and do something that <clears throat> this summation here, okay, will have let's let's go with this probability. This probability here is the probability the probability of B times the probability of J given its parents, which is alarm, times the probability of Mary calls given alarm, times the probability of earthquake equals false or earthquake equals yeah, times the probability of earthquake times oops, I'm not filling in the time, sorry, we'll just put it like this for compactness. Times the probability of alarm given its parents, of alarm given its parents, uh, which are burglary and earthquake. This is what goes in here. This here gets converted into this, the probability of the node given the parents, probability of the node given the parents. Now, before this, there is a summation sum of E and A, right? Now, the thing is that here there are some terms that don't depend on E or A, right? So for example, if we start grouping the terms with A, um, if we start grouping the terms with A, for example, I'll just go here, and the probability of something with A goes here, all right, so what I can do here is to do the summation of over A, so this will be sum over A, this will be a summation over A, I just can't draw the, the sigma with my um, with the font that I have, but I will put E here, how about that, that's a sigma over A, this is a sigma over E, and then PB doesn't depend on anything, so it's outside of the equation, okay? This is really, it's really neat to note these things, because then PB will compute only once. We don't have to repeat it all the time, okay? P of E will compute only uh, twice when this summation is true or false. And this we will compute, you know, a couple of times but it's a lot less computation, uh, computationally intensive. Now, what about the probability of J given that uh, uh, burglary is true? Well, that will become the probability of, this will become the probability of burglary equals true. I'm just going to denote it with lowercase b. Um, John, we don't know whether it calls or not. Uh, then say Mary, we don't know whether she calls or not, earthquake and alarm. And the summation over this, we need to know what, what are the hidden nodes. The, the hidden nodes will be, there will be a summation over E, over E, M, and A. Okay? Of this. So let me just see if I can make this a little bigger. There. Okay, summation over E, M, and A, so three of these sigma signs here for this probability distribution. If you do this in the following order, if you do this E, A, and M, and at the end, at the end, you put the summation of all the terms with M, try to do this yourself, so P of B given its parents, P of J given its parents, P of M given its parents, P of E given its parents, P of A given its parents, and group all the terms with M at the end and put a, a summation of M. You will end up with a probability of all the values of M over all the values of alarm. That summation over all the values of M given the value of alarm is always going to be 1 because that's a probability distribution and that will just go away. So do this exercise, convert it into the sum over all the, all the variables that aren't present here, the hidden variables, 
all the same given this probability here okay and now you know that b is not a big b but it's b equals true and j is not a small j but it's actually a big j okay and probability of j can be can, can go out try to do this yourself so um, let's see what happens that is basically um, uh, I will talk later about compact conditional distributions and when what happens when the variables are not discrete, like yes or no, but what happens when they have continuous variables, values.